Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Linux server so we can host a, a SAF application and then do some testing with it like automated testing in this case we will test um, how it will perform with X amount of clients connected so to continue I make like this little agenda so this is what we're going to do first we're going to set up an Ubuntu server uh, the version will be 1604 just because I know that everything works with that version you can do it with 18 actually or 20 but there are some uh, small changes on what I will do and how it should work on those versions so this is like good enough for everything that you need to do so let's stay with this then we will set up webmin and virtualmin that is um, an administrative tool for domains and for servers basically is somehow like the open source version of cpanel or plesk so it helps you set up the web server and the databases and so on then we will set up a subdomain um, basically this is what you will do in any um, web hosting basically uh, so you can access it through a domain name and not from an IP then we will do a proxy redirection we will need this because we will actually set up webmin and virtualmin with Apache so Apache will forward the request to our .NET application in this case a SAF Blazor application so we need to have that proxy redirection then we will install a SAF Blazor application on the Linux server then we will install some benchmark tools we will install Test Cafe and then with the Test Cafe runner we will run multiple uh, tests that will simulate some load and then we will review the results so first let's connect to the server I have I, I'm connected already but I will start from from zero so you can see so well no let's start in a different way before we connect to the server what we're going to do is let me show you some stuff that I have in here is this one so we're going to use this server here so or it's not that one no it's not the 60 gigabytes it's this one it's the 30 gigabytes so we're going to use this one so we have 8 cores 30 gigabytes of RAM 800 gigabytes of SSD we have like really good bandwidth and well that's the only thing that you need to know from the server so and it's like 14 euros it's like cheap so I strongly suggest you to check Contavo I will put a link on the video description so okay this this server is the the one that we're going to use uh, we use this one for Subhana because Subhana needs I think like 24 gigabytes of RAM just to start something like that so we needed to do some tests with Subhana so we use this server for that but I just reset it completely so it's like clean so okay let's start um, let's see first we, what we need to do is we're going to set up uh, where are my notes we're going to connect to the server and basically set up webmin and virtualmin and maybe something in between that needs to be updated or something so let's start that's supposed to be like really easy done that like a hundred times already so let's see if I I can manage to do it for this video okay so we will use putty to connect ok 
okay I have it here but it's too small I'm going to change the font I'm just going to make it let's see appearance maybe 18 yeah this is way better so let's use root to connect and then the password okay as you can see we're in Contao at the moment so first let me show you the characteristics of the server so for that we can use this command I will put them in the notes of the of the video so you can see that we have 8 CPUs that is uh, 86 and 64 bits I mean we can run both uh, is an AMD CPU and basically that's what we need to know about this so let's clear and now let's check the memory this will surprise you actually so we want to see how much memory we have and how much is free and we are using uh, the M parameter to show it in megabytes so this is basically 30 gigabytes of RAM and the Linux OS is only using 77 um, in the console so imagine like how, how, like how efficient this is so well now it's time to go and set up um, a virtual min and web min. So for that we will go to their website, which is here, and they tell you what to do. So let's see. This is like the easy way. You just need to copy this command. This will download a script. So where is Putty? Here. Okay, the script is there, so now we need to run the script. So for that is this. I think it will ask some questions. Um, so let's see what we need to answer. Okay, so yeah, let's run the script. Okay, the package will be LAMP because this can also install like nginx if you want. But uh, let's go with LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And because we need Apache in this case, we can do it with nginx, but I'm more comfortable with Apache because I don't. I mean, I set up hundreds of Apache servers before, so it's kind of easy for me to move there. So, well, I guess I will put the recording on pause and then I will return because otherwise you will only see these downloading files and it will take like maybe f five minutes for all. So, uh, or around three to five minutes. So, uh, so you don't have to wait. I will pause this. Okay, we're done. So what we need to do next is to connect to any of these URLs in a browser and then we will uh, be on the administrative panel of virtual min and web min. So I have this in, in the clipboard already. So let's find this one. Okay, it, it's telling us that the connection is not secure because there is no certificate actually. So let's click on advance and proceed. In here we need to log in with the same username as we did in the iOS. So basically for the OS we use root and the password for root.
Okay. Now we have in this area we have webmin and this is virtual min. So webmin will control the server like the packages and the OS and virtual min will create um, like virtual hosting for um, for several domains. So let's do the setup for this. Okay, so we will run everything on RAM. Basically, the question that it will ask is like, do you want to run the antivirus, the mail server, and some other stuff in RAM? Or like, um, set, it, set them up like using less RAM, but it will take more CPU. So we have plenty of RAM, so everything will be run on RAM. So yes, for both. Uh, for this yes also the antivirus see the antivirus is really heavy 750 megabytes in RAM because it will uh, basically track all the users and the mailboxes but the OS was only using 77 megabytes so can you imagine how big uh, the antivirus process can be Okay, now we need to set up the spam filter and I, we're going to run it on RAM also. And now uh, it's asking like if we want to run uh, MariaDB. And yes, we will use it and if we want to administrate also Postgres and in this case if we select yes uh, it will fail because you need to have it installed already uh, it doesn't come with virtual min or web min so we will check that uh, we will do like a setup before we click next so this is the official documentation on how to set up Postgres so basically we need well we can copy all the script here and we need to go to the console again i mean to putty so let's paste this and that's it uh, basically it will uh, set up some repositories and then update the installation information and then just set up postgres see this is the last line I will leave all the links also in in the description something red uh-huh let's see okay doesn't look like an error so let's go back to here so we will say yes and yes and this will be the password for my sql server um, that's too complicated so no i will keep this no i mean yes let's change it this will be change me 2020 okay so for how how do we want to set up mysql or mariadb in the usage of ram so the default settings is it will use 500 megabytes then for a small system 260 256 for medium 512 for large 1 gigabyte and for huge it will use 2 gigabytes so let's use huge it says like recommended actually <laughs> so we have plenty of ram we have used only like 3 gigabytes um, from 
30 gigabytes that we have. So we have like 27 free. And let's see, uh, we will not use anything else for DNS zones. It will be the same server. And we will store the password in plain text in this case because uh, otherwise will be uh, it will be complicated to do some processes that needs plain text password. And is this also a test server anyway? Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is new, so. Yes, we want to enable Let's Encrypt and we want to set up the default name to this. And that's, uh, this is like super nice because we can access through the domain name and it will have SSL. This is something new. This is maybe the new version of, of Webmin. Okay, so we are done with the setup. And now VirtualMean is doing something new that is creating the first domain for you. So the first domain is basically the server name. And now it shows here in the list before it was not like that, but that doesn't matter that much anyway. So the next step would be to set up a subdomain. So for that, I already set up my DNS on my domain administration tool, and we have this. The domain that we're going to use is safblazortest.bitframeworks.com. So let's ping this so you can see that it's pointing to this. See the IP address is the same as this one. So uh, with that on hand, let's copy the domain name. Uh, let's set up a new virtual server. So the domain name is this one. Um, SAF test. So, oh, SAF test. So the password, let's uh, do a super secure password. Okay. So the server template, we will use the default template, the account template also. And the administ administration username will be automatic. That is based on the domain name. <coughs> then for everything else, we will use the defaults. Just in here, we will check something different. It's like set up SSL website too. So it creates an entry for the SSL um, Redirection and that's basically it. Create. And I think it's done or it's almost done. See, this is this new version is like nice. It's, I think it's already requesting the certificate. And it did not work, but um, basically that doesn't matter that much. Um, again, this is the new version of Webmin, so maybe some stuff will not work, so, but everything else was uh, successful, so, yeah, we're here, so now we have two domains in here, so let's go to server configuration, and let's try to do the SSL again. So 
so let's go to certificate and let's try to just request for one which is the main subdomain so how do we delete this <coughs> okay so we'll we'll just put one on the list because we don't care for the mail subdomain for the admin subdomain just for the main subdomain maybe it will work in this way I think it failed because the other don't exist at the moment yeah see the request was successful so um, I think uh, the main problem was that the other subdomains were not set up already okay so that means that we can go to tu, 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 let's see let's go to the summary we should be able to go to this domain and okay this is the not uh, non-secure version but if we do HTTPS yeah see the SSL is working so okay this uh, is also new before it didn't show like a default website here so um, it's nice this new version like uh, beside the SSL stuff everything is like working like really good okay so uh, let's see the agenda to see how it's everything going we have the server virtual mean and and web mean uh, we have the subdomain already so we will need to do the proxy but maybe in this case um, I need to set up the SAF application before because there is one thing um, before I mean to set up the proxy I need to know to which URL I need to forward the communication so basically it means that the SAF application should be running already so well um, I think I will um, set up the application before uh, just I don't know like I want to show that but let's see um, I will make sure that I know the information for this and then we will continue with the video we'll stop a little bit right now okay okay let's uh, set up the proxy so for that what we need to do is well we need to know to which address and which port we will redirect the traffic from the domain to the local internal application so let me show you here we have the application that we're going to test this is a soft blazer application so let me show you the changes that I have done here so first let's go to the server and then let's go to the program and in here I just added this line this means that it's going to be bound to all the local address in the port 1605 if not uh, if you don't use this it's going to be bound to all the address in port 5000 I think and well there is some problem if you don't set it sometimes um, it might try to uh, to be bound to the IPv4 address and IPv6 so it's better to just use this um, it is safer so well that means that um, that's the proxy that we need to do but anyway I want to show you something else here uh, let's see the application it's here so 
basically in the application I commented out the update schema so I can update it um, as just in, I mean when I run it the first time so I don't have to compile the updater for Linux and then run it or create the database with the script it will update on database mismatch okay so that's what we know so far we have um, the server we know that is going to be bound to the local host on port 1605 and also what else what else okay uh, we're using two nuggets here uh, my SQL and Postgres because I want to do the test with both databases so okay uh, let's set up the proxy so for that we go to server uh, configuration and then we go to edit proxy website and this is really easy we just click on yes and we click on the address that we want so it's going to be localhost 1605 and well the application that I show you here in the github repository I already have it compiled so let's, let's upload it to the server let's go to file manager so this will open in our H, uh, public HTML directory and let's see oh we're in the wrong domain so let's change okay uh, so I think the proxy we did it in the wrong address so let's remove it I will just copy this well I will cut it and save and let's come here and ta -ta -ta -ta, here let's go to proxy say yes and put this okay so let's go to the file manager okay this is this is the home folder is in sub blazor test this is the user and this is the HTML public HTML folder so let's go here to the user folder in here I will create a new folder and I will call it app So here we have the app folder. Let's go in and let's upload a file. Okay. So let me see where my files are. Okay, so let me put this in a zip. Okay, so I have, here I have the zip. So I will drag and drop. It's like a 67 megabytes file so it's uploading now you can see it here after that we're going to unzip it and then change the permission on the executable file and run it so we will check that the um, that the proxy is actually working
Okay, so here we have the zip. Let's extract it. Okay, so here we have the file. So to the executable is this big one, 174 megabytes. Let's change this. Change permission. We can put 667. Um, or 777 actually no this is the other one that we can use is 755 or 777 I will use 777 in this case which is all the permissions so okay uh, here is the SAF application we have the proxy already so then what we need to do is to run the staff application so for that we need to connect let's use putty again so this will be root and my super secure password okay so let me make this bigger let's see change settings so we want to change the appearance let's change the fonts to 18 okay apply and okay it's bigger now so we need to go to the root folder then do clear so if we do ls we're in the root folder at the moment so we need to go to the home folder so home cd home so in here we have the SAF blazor test folder and in here we have well um, the app folder this is the one that we are looking for that that is the place where we uploaded the the application so let's clear everything again and do a L ls okay so here the executable file is this green one so to execute it we need to do dot I don't know if that's forward slash or backslash forward slash <laughs> I guess anyway so the name of the executable file so let's click enter and let's cross our fingers okay so the application is running on this URL so when I go to the domain the traffic will be forward to this URL basically that's why we set the proxy for this application so before I run it the first time let me show you the database so here we have two databases one is Postgres and one is MySQL so let's do manage and as you can see there is no tables in this one but when I run the application for first time it will run the updater and you will see the uh, tables here so let's open a new tab and then let's go to this address as you can see the proxy is working it's forwarding the communication and here you on oh, it doesn't show in the output well let's do admin this will log in for the first time and I guess I will it will execute the the updater okay so here we have the application and we only have domain object one this is a long text so the idea is in here we should like um, basically um, save some large text and see how it will behave so now that I run the application for the first time 
um, in here if we go to the database and let's refresh this you will see the tables so ta -ta -ta. where were we Okay, so we have all the tables here, and uh, domain object one. Uh, let's see how can we see the data. I don't think we can actually see the data here. It's only the definition. Well, but anyway, uh, I I just wanted to show you that. There is a, there are tables in the database now. Okay, so so far so good. We have the application running. We have the proxy. So let me check the agenda. Where is that word file? It's closed. So So we have the proxy, we have the Blazor application, we need benchmark tools, test cafe, and the runner. So basically, I'm not going to set up the benchmark benchmark tool yet. Um, what I'm going to do is okay. So we have. Um, the server, web mean and virtual mean, the subdomain, the proxy redirection, and the self application. So we need to basically install the benchmark tools, then test cafe, and then run multiple uh, tests to simulate the load. So let's continue with the benchmark tools. Okay, so let me show you how we will simulate the load. For that, I will open Test Cafe. I have it here actually. So here it is. This is the test that we're going to run. So basically what it does is um, it locates the username text box on the login screen and then it basically will do this. It will maximize the window, then it will type the username which is admin, then it will look for the button with the text login and click over it. And after that, it will click in the new action, and then it will insert this text. This text here is a payload. So let me show you what I did. So basically, the idea is this. I use this website. So in this website, you can tell it to generate a lorem ipsum text. That is the typical placeholder text. And you can tell them something like this. You, I want to generate five paragraphs, or I want to generate five words, or uh, X amount of bytes, or a list. So what I did is I did this, uh, 5,000 bytes does 50 kilobytes. So this text here, this 50 kilobytes, is basically the same text that is here. So this is like 50 kilobytes on text. So 
let's run this one time so you can see what it does so it will basically log in insert one record and then in a loop will insert 100 records so let's run this one time and uh, actually the URL is here and let's change the name to SAF blazor load test so I'm going to run just one instance but the idea is to run like 200 instances at the same time so it would be 200 uh, web browsers logging and inserting data at the same time so let's run this one time at least so you can see what the test does it opened a browser automatically without me doing anything and it will log in and it will, it will type the text then it will save and close and it will start the loop of a hundred so the test will insert 101 records so if we run like a hundred instance of this 200 instance of this it will simulate 200 users connecting to the same application at the same time inserting data and the payload is not small it's 50 kilobytes so it's like kind of a big record so well that's it um that's it for what the test is so the only thing that we're missing is to run uh like several instances of the test to see how how many instances we can run and how the check how the server will behave <laughs>